Hey, what's up, guys? So, up next, we're going to talk about the Delphi murder case. This is going to be part one. You know, this right here is just a sad story, you know? Our town lost their innocence. You hear of stuff, terrible things happening in the big cities, but you never hear of it here. The city of 3000 is on edge. Two bodies found, no one in custody. Bodies have been positive, identified as Abigail J. Williams, 13 of the Delphi area, and Liberty Rose Lynn German, 14 of the Delphi area. This is considered a double homicide investigation. Who would be so barbaric? Who would kill two teenage girls? This isn't something that happens in Delphi. I couldn't go outside of the house without having a panic attack. There's still a killer out there, potentially walking amongst us. Often, in missing cases, you don't have a picture, you don't have audio, and you don't have video. Because of the courage of one girl on a bridge, you have all of that. Guys. We have the suspected killer on video. We see his face. We hear his voice. He says, down the hill. It's all right there. You have all of that. And still, we wait. We wait. And we wait. The police are constantly asked, why hasn't this case been solved? Why haven't they figured this out? This guy could strike again. It could be your kids. It happened to our, our family. I don't want it to happen to anybody else. That person, we're standing here right now. What do you say to that person? Why? You son of a bitch. Why? That's what I say. I think in 2017, Delphi was the safest place any of us felt like we could be. We would leave our doors unlocked. We didn't have security systems. This is small town USA. You know, this is where you go visit grandma and grandpa, your uncle, small businesses, restaurants, a, a great community to, to, to raise a family. Everybody says hi, throws a wave up, you know, always willing to stop and help somebody out. That's just uh, the way it is. In this small, friendly, welcoming community, we have two teenage girls, Abby Williams and Libby German. They were good friends. They had the same interests in music and arts, had played volleyball together. She loved helping other people, being around, assisting her nieces, playing games and drawing and art and being creative. <laughs> and music was very important to her also. Um, she was working on the piano and she learned how to play the saxophone. She and her aunt used to have their little jam sessions in the house. It was terrible, but they, they certainly enjoyed it. <laughs> this is a quilt that we had made that uh, tells a little bit of Libby's life. <laughs> Libby wanted to try everything. She wasn't afraid of anything, except the dark. <laughs> she was very giving, very stick up for the underdog. We were inseparable. We were always together. Um, we pretty much did everything together. They had so much promise. They were athletes, they were artists. They were things they were gonna do. Everything was normal up till February the 13th, 2017. It was a beautiful day that the girls said, you know what, let's hang out together, BFFs. They went out for a walk. The old Monon High Bridge, the, the, the miles of trails that go through the parks. This is part of their history, part of who they are. There were tons of kids out there that day because, well, it was unseasonably nice. And it was, hey, we're out of school, can we go? I was getting ready for work um, and Libby busts open the bathroom door as I'm just sitting there um, getting ready. And she says, hey, can we go to High Ridge today? 
The moment I dropped them off, um, Libby got out of the car and turned around and told me she loved me. Um, and just knowing that those were the last words is one of the most helpful things to me. It was supposed to be just a normal walk on the trail when they went to go pick them up a couple hours later. They never showed up. Becky tried to call and uh, wouldn't get any any response. So she called me probably about four o'clock or so in the afternoon. And she said, hey, we're not getting any, can't get a hold of Libby. I said, all right, let me pack up here and I'll, I'll head that way. Just walking up and down trails, trying to look and hollering and yelling. And, and uh, of course, we were getting no response. And, she said, it's starting to get dark. Let's think we ought to call the police. So I did. My first thought was that I was going to kick my sister's butt when I found her um, because this wasn't something that she'd ever done. They were grounded as soon as we found them and they got home. That we didn't think the worst. We didn't, know, we didn't nowhere near think the worst. And the whole evening, just as it progressed, uh, the sense of urgency kept going. Probably 9 o'clock at night, Delphi, you can see flashlights all over Delphi. Every alley, every road, somebody was walking somewhere looking. And it just continued all night. Police, neighbors, in vehicles, um, everywhere, helicopter was, I mean, everyone was out looking for these young girls. You still had hope, you know? But then Friday the 14th, after the noon hour, we got the word. The bodies were found. That was not the news that anyone was expecting. I had a friend that ran up to me and said her husband called her and that they found the girls, but she wouldn't say anything more. So we we got to the trailhead and I ran up to a fireman and, and said, You need to take you need to take me to Libby. She's been out all night. She's she's gonna need me. I saw the coroner's van go by. And that's that's when it hit. She's, she's not hurt and waiting for us. Um, that's when I realized. Any loss of life is horrific. I think the part that really struck a nerve is when we're told that this is part of a criminal investigation. A crime has been committed. This is considered a double homicide investigation. No further information will be released at this time. That changes the tone. That's an act of evil. Now we know. We know that we have a murder mystery on our hands and the entire country is watching. The police have gotten thousands of tips in this case. And then, all of a sudden, we have an image of a potential suspect. Here he is, Delphi. Here he is, community. Here he is, America. That's the guy. Can you find the guy? And before long, you actually hear his voice. And so there was a, a hope, an anticipation that someone's going to call and say, we have the guy. The call never came. I mean, I figure, OK, tomorrow, next day, we're going to get this guy. But here we are five years later. And then in December, authorities investigating Delphi murders put out a call for new information. They're looking into a social media account with the handle at Anthony underscore shots. They say it's filled with stolen pictures of a male model. And I'm thinking, what is going on? Anthony underscore shots. What is this about? That's generated tremendous, a tremendous number of leads for us, and that's as far as I can go. When this special edition of Nightline returns, five years after the murders in Delphi, will the killer ever be found? How close are we? Today could be the day. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for... Uh... You know, man, it's just so hard. All right, well, I've still got quite a bit of research to do on this. You know, this right here was just the tip of the iceberg, you know? At some point, hopefully, I will be covering 
uh, the trial for that scumbag. Uh, that is my hope that we will eventually figure out who did it and why. Um, Alright, I will see y'all in the next video. Until then, I'm out.